modern high-rise apartment construction is often plagued by a wide variety of building defects. Amongst managers, owners and builders, water penetration problems are known to be the most frequent and most expensive type of defect. Over recent years, leaks in and around balconies have become the number one source of water penetration problem in modern unit construction. Drive down the major highways of your city and the white staining and leaking of balconies is evident. Not only is this unsightly, but in many cases, balconies leak internally, causing damage to surfaces and inconvenience to occupants. This module will deal with these types of leaks. Balcony leaks reveal themselves in various forms. Leaking into interior spaces via doors and windows and flashings. Leaks through cracks in balcony soffits or ceilings which form stains, drips and stalactites. Leaching up through tile surfaces causing unsightly white stains. Or leaching through balcony edges. To find out why these occur, we need to go right back to the beginning of the building process. So let's follow one scenario and how it leads to defects of this type. Step one, a developer decides to build a set of apartments and an architect is asked to put together initial drawings. Ideally at this time, balconies would be designed with integral hobs, integral falls and integral step downs at sliding doors. This design lets most of the water shed away from the balcony without running internally or leaching to the outside. However, in this case, and many others, this isn't what happens. The developer needs to maximise the number of floors to make his profit on the job. So the architect will be asked to reduce the floor to ceiling heights. This means step downs at the sliding doors and integral falls in the structural slab are eliminated. The builder is selected via a cheapest price tender, which means he'll need to pick up the cheapest subcontractors to win the job. Part of the deal is for the builder to take over the finishing of the design detailing of the building. Once the builder reviews the drawings, he realises that he can make a saving by pouring the concrete slab without an integral hob at the perimeter. This gets back some of the profit given away at tender stage. So we now have a flat plate slab design for all the balconies. All the protections to water penetration from our original sketch have now been removed and somehow they need to be added back. Without a step down in the slab, the door frame is bolted surface. To keep the balcony tile and tile bed in place, an aluminium angle is attached at the edge of the slab. Without an integral fall in the slab, the waterproofing membrane is applied straight to the concrete angles and frame. To get the falls in the surface of the balcony to shed the water, a cement topping screed and tile has been added. The building is then handed over to the new owners and the leaking and leaching begins. Let's see how this unfolds. Once the step down at the sliding doors is deleted, the build up of the tiles and tile bed makes the water level on the outside of the sliding door higher than inside. Since the membrane was only turned up to the side of the frame, it is easily overflowed in bad storms. Then bingo, water entry and wet carpet. Once the integral fall in the concrete slab is taken away, the membrane has to be applied to a flat plate and stores water forevermore. There is huge differential movement between each of these elements as they respond to the thermal changes, flexing from wind pressure and the settlement of the structure. Remember, a single continuous structural concrete profile would not be subjected to many of these differential stresses. The builder has only allocated enough money for a thin type membrane to be applied. This type of membrane cannot bridge the huge movements that take place between the different bits that have been added to the flat plate slab. Any thin or rigid membrane is likely to crack at this point. Then the stored water has time to seep through the concrete, dissolving calcium and other minerals as it runs down the cracks. On exposure to the air, the mineral solution dries, leaving behind stalactites. Just like in caves. Similarly, water stored in the tile bed can be drawn upwards to the tile surface where it dries out or runs out through to the front face. 
you are now relying on falls in the top surface of the tiles to get rid of most of the water before it has a chance to pond. But because our concrete had got rid of the falls, we now have ponded water on the tiles as well. So there you have it, the ideal design being compromised over the course of the construction process with disastrous results. It's scary to think that many buildings don't even have the correct design to begin with. It is these practices that have led to an epidemic of balcony leaching and leaking problems.